Crypto as we know it will, will never be the same. As things stand right now, we use cryptocurrency as this means of investment. We buy the tokens and we understand the process of buying the tokens. We know that you need wallet addresses, seed phrases. We understand this world to a degree that is completely unnecessary in the future. I like to think of this as being very much like the internet. When the internet started, those who understood the internet were those who could code. They could code every last detail into the website. So there was a gap there, a knowledge gap for some time. Either you knew how to code, therefore you could build websites, or you didn't know how to code and you couldn't build websites. <laughs> so there's a massive difference in between those two types of people. However, as time goes on, the websites become easier to build. And where we stand right now with the internet is that we have the likes of Squarespace, Wix, uh, WordPress, any amount of people and any amount of platforms in place for people to build websites. Whoa, what is that line? For people to build these websites. I can't fix that. Oh my goodness, what's going on? I was doing I was doing a monologue. I was doing a monologue. Now I've got to clean this thing. It ruined monologue. Oh man. Anyway, I'll get back to it. So just like people who knew how to code could access the internet and, and make websites, this is where we are now with crypto. At some point, crypto will change forever and services, platforms, user interfaces will rise up and people will no longer be trading cryptocurrencies. Trading cryptocurrencies will be something people did back in the past, just like coding websites will be something people did back in the past. Of course, people code websites right now. It's live. People code websites right now, right? But far less people code websites right now because you can just go onto Wix and build a website. So when we look in the future for cryptocurrency, I do believe people will stop trading cryptocurrencies at this level. All we know about crypto right now is trading cryptocurrencies, trading tokens. In the future, there will just be companies operating on the blockchain. No one will be trading tokens in this manner unless some of these tokens are commodities. And at which point people will just trade those commodities like they trade every other commodity. So we're in for a wild ride. As we're in this moment, we're in the coding moment, just like, just like that side of things uh, it, with the internet. The dot-com boom made a massive wealth transfer into technology. We are waiting for that to happen in crypto. We're waiting for that wealth transfer to happen from Web 2 to Web 3, from a traditional banking system into the new banking system. There's always a wealth transfer in these moments, and that's what we're waiting for. So we have to understand where we are and also understand that all these trading things and all these understanding wallet codes and all of that, this is something that's very early, right? We're early to this whole thing with that mentality. But companies will rise up that we've never heard of that will come up and be like the new Wix for cryptocurrency and allow an interface for payments between from a business to a business or from a person to a person. There'll be apps everywhere or decentralized apps. And it'll all be so much easier. Not for us, we'll understand how it works in the background, right? We'll understand actually how it works technologically in the background. But the people 20 years from now, who never had to ever learn about cryptocurrency or how it operates in the background will just be using cryptocurrency through the companies that they're using. They'll be paying with their CBDC, not really understanding what's happening behind the scenes, but we will, we'll understand what's going on. 
And because we understand what's going on early, that puts us in a position where we're in that wealth transfer mode. Uh, so it's all, it's all crazy. Tony XRP, I think that was an accurate title actually. Uh, but you feel free to go away. New Anomaly Productions, thank you much, very much for $2. I'm going to do this like a little monologue at the beginning, and then we're just going to get into questions from the uh, from the audience. Do I think exchanges will go away for crypto? I don't know. No, I don't think exchanges go away for crypto. Crypto specific exchanges potentially might just get acquired by larger, larger exchanges uh, that do all commodities and all, all types of... Uh, trading pairs. You know, I don't, I, at some point it won't matter that these are crypto and these are traditional. They will just all be, you know, they'll just all be there. Um, so whether, I don't think they disappear, but I think you understand what I'm saying there. Let's get into some more questions. I didn't see any questions there. How long will it be before they create the perfect token? That's an interesting question. I think you have to look at it like this. AI can only create, well, I'm not gonna limit this to AI, but for everything that happens in the world, whether that's bank to bank transfers, person to person transfers, storing of value, smart contracts, um, education platforms, there will be a blockchain that's perfect for that specific thing. And this is what I got out of my interviews with the people at R3, right? The people at R3 were basically saying, you know, there's no one token or, or technology where you can just paint the brush over all, over everything and everything happens with that, with that one. And I think we talk about Ripple like that a lot, um, but it's not, it's not like that. When, when there's a specific need, there is a specific token that handles that need. Right. So if we're talking about cross border payment, remember how small this is. We've got the traditional banking system. Right. That goes even further into uh, payments because there's messaging in, in the financial system. There's so many different areas of the financial system. You go all the way down, Nisha, all the way down into cross border bank to bank payments. The perfect token is XRP. Right. So. XRP would that that's a lot of volume and a lot of value that would be running on the XRP ledger and through XRP, but it is a tiny niche of the whole ecosystem. And so one of the things I got out of these conversations with R3, um, and there'll be more conversations to come. They invited me to the office. <laughs> so I'll go to the office one day and, and see what's up. Um, is that some countries might require um a, a, a token that can transfer value between hospitals. Like it could be that specific and that country could value that higher than other countries. And therefore they would actually prioritize a very specific token over Ripple. So every country is going to have its very specific need and there's going to be a blockchain to fit that need. I think after this whole collapse comes up, comes down, and then, and then we kind of rise up out of it. I think there's going to be a handful that do survive those ISO tokens. They're going to form the, the basis of this new system moving forward um, because we hit most of the, the, the requirements. You know, we hit bank to bank transfers. We hit with Stellar. We hit person to person transfers and unbanked nations. And, you know, F, F, and XDC doing the smart contracts and uh, Quant being an overledger, the, the framework's all there within the ISO. Uh, thing, but in between those connections between you know Corda and XDC and and uh, XRP and XLM, between all of those little connections, new companies will pop up that make the the public able to interface with that system without the complication. Right, this is how crypto is going to change. Right, no one's going to be thinking about tokens in the future. It's just going to be on the blockchain. Crypto Spider, thank you for your $1.99. Um, I think 2023 is the last year we will be, we will be poor. Interesting. Well, it depends how much you have. <laughs> depends how much you have uh, this year. Um, I certainly hope so. Uh, I like the optimistic outlook. Um, 
Roman, you just donated and didn't give a message. Uh, I appreciate the, the five pounds there, Roman. Um, so, uh, mouse lungs, good question. Very good question. What do you think about all the documents coming out on the ISO 20.022 going live on April 1st and all of the banks shutting down that weekend? So we've gone through this before, right? We had November the 21st and the just to just to clarify what happened on November the 1st, we well, I kind of dis discovered it, <laughs> but there's there was uh payment codes. This whole ISO fascination with with the update happening, I think originated on this channel. And I maybe wish I hadn't because we got too much uh into the date. And that was, you know, I accept responsibility for that. Um, the problem with looking at dates for the ISO updates is that as you come to learn, as you, as you learn more about this, the ISO updates in messaging is extremely complex and extremely layered. So one update might include all of the messages being updated on a system that relate to addresses, not, not wallet addresses, not even crypto, but, but like the partner bank's physical address. So they have to update that. And then they see the problems with that because you've got like the, uh, in German, you've got a Strasse or something. It's got like a weird, if you say street, spell street in German, it's got a really strange character. It's like an S with a line down the middle. They have to account for those kinds of characters. So maybe November the 21st was an update to, to get all the systems on with, you know, across the board with all the addresses and all the different characters that can be in play. And then you've got another update and that might update something else in this whole system. So yeah, that's it, that's it, uh, Elias Benjamin. You can see the character there. So because there's so many layers to the updates, it's probably gonna take multiple updating maintenance weekends to, to get to the point where you know there's a tipping point to where now people are actually using that standard. But what we're waiting for really is the update to the part of the message that relates to retrieving a token from a digital token identifier from a blockchain, okay? So essentially what that means is we're waiting for that update to where the message, the ISO message, links with the APIs, the Swift API and the message, right? That's the GPI uh, from MT to MX, yeah. So it attaches via that API and says, okay, uh, we need to send a message that actually reaches into a blockchain and it reaches into that blockchain, identifies the token that needs to come out and takes the amount of tokens uh, out that are required for that transaction, right? That is a specific part of the update of the ISO 20022. We don't know how many of those layers we have in front of that moment. So we just have to wait. So I wouldn't place too much emphasis on the 1st of April. A lot of people are focusing on 1st of April, which fair enough, you can do that. I'm not uh, hedging my bets there, to be honest. Uh, more from an emotional standpoint than, than anything else. Um, Eric Goldsmith, $1.99, peace and positive vibes. Absolutely, I think that's the uh, best way to be. Um, but Roman, if you do ask a question, I will... Uh... Oh, Roman did ask. Okay, okay, sorry, Roman. Let's get back to it. You have an amount of pounds to buy gold and silver. What would be the proportion? Please share a link where we can buy those through you. I very much appreciate that. So how I've got it is, let me think. I th I'm gonna try and think in ounces. Um, so for me, the vast majority is in silver. I, I have the vast majority in silver. Um, and only because I like how much I get with silver. Um, and that's really, that's really only it. There's lots of cases. Zach Rector thinks that silver has been, uh, the most limited in price. So, uh, giving it the highest potential in the future. I don't know about all of that. Um, but the, the way I've viewed it is I get more metal for my money if I go for silver. Um, I've got a little bit of gold. If you want to buy any gold or silver, you actually get a free Britannia if you spend over 250 pounds. So a Britannia is like 32 pounds or something. 
So you can get that in the link in the description. I get it by bullion by post. So um, yeah, it's worth worth checking out. Um, let's have a look at some more questions. Thoughts on the social media excitement around the rapture, where all debt will be erased and everything bad will go away on the 1st of April, the Nasara. So I've seen a guy called XRP Lion 1 or something. I don't know. The, I'm not going to say it's not real. I'm definitely not going to say that because when we look at the likes of, you know, the lunar phases for Bitcoin, for example, for some reason at a certain moon phase, the the Bitcoin price tends to go up 80, 85 percent of the time. That's ridiculously like accurate in, in, in this whole thing, because we're ultimately guessing everything. So if the moon phases kind of kind of give you a steer on what's going to happen with the Bitcoin price, for example, the idea that God has chosen to do this like Nisara, lift everyone out of the debt, and there's this good angelic force in the world. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> you know, people use Pluto and, and Saturn's rings alignment and stuff to, to gauge what's going to happen in the market. And it works sometimes, right? So I can't say anything bad about anything that people say, but um, I tend to stay away from uh, listening to all that stuff. For me, it's less uh, rooted in in factual behavior, but sometimes it has the data to back it up. So it's kind of strange. Um, okay, so we've got a serious question. Um, Ivan Lowe or Ivan Lowe. Lulu, serious question. The API to retrieve XRP's data is not working, allegedly. Exchanges are getting the circulating supply of, of the date it went offline. Did I found the switch? You might have to break that down in the Discord for me a bit more because my brain can't function at that level live. <laughs> I have to sit, sit and think about stuff. So go into the uh, Discord. Everyone should go into the Discord. Um, be part of that chat and just tag me over there um, and I'll, I'll have a think about it. Um, what do you think about Jim Cramer stating that Ripple will win the case? Well, he's usually wrong, so <laughs> I wouldn't pay too much attention. He looked like he said that comment kind of off the cuff without really thinking. Um, ooh, how about this one? An Ananya, Ananya Antkit. Thank you for the 44 of that currency, which I don't know. How do you think XRP is being positioned right now? Um, I think XRP is, is a little overextended. Um, so by that, I mean, I think the price has gone up a little too high, a little too early. Um, I've got buy orders. I'll tell everyone very transparently. I've got buy orders for XRP at 36 cents, 37 cents, 35 cents, and one at 31 cents, just in case. I'm not too bothered if it never comes back down, right? But if it does, you know, I I'm there. History would say that we've got, we've, we can come down again because 99% of the time we do. It's only 1% of the time over the history of XRP that the price has actually continued to go up and you have been too late. So I go with percent percentages, and I just tend to think the percentages are on our side for it coming back down. Um, De Chiefy is on his wife's 50th watching in Crete. How very fancy. Um, happy birthday to your wife. Oh, that was rupees. Okay. Thank you for the 44 rupees. Uh, Niek Winink. Winink. Sorry, I said the name really wrong there. Sorry. Um, if you're enjoying this, by the way, if you like these, I, I'm going to be doing them every so often. I think every week I'm going to do one live stream. So uh, if you are excited about that, hit the like button. Uh, but if you're not excited, then uh, it's strange that you would be here. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's answer this question. Um, with all this capital injection from Asia, should the price of XRP not be much higher? Is it so that it is hold, held back artificially? So I think what you're talking about in Asia is South Korea. South Korea has always had kind of a large volume uh, using XRP. Um, I think the th important thing to understand here is that 
the use of XRP isn't the real price driver, okay? So we talked about this in my documentary about the XRP price. You should go and have a look at that if you haven't watched that. If someone can link that video in, in the chat here, it'd be really important for you to see because Molly Elmore on there discusses how it's actually value added to the ledger that increases the price of an XRP. Yes, when countries are using it and it's always being used, that will increase the price marginally. Kind of like if South Korea started using them XRP as payments kind of halfway, that's kind of the result we would see, you know, the XRP going from 30 cents to almost 60 cents, right? Remember, this is South Korea using it for some payments. Um, the price isn't going to skyrocket, like uh, go, to the, go to the absolute moon when it's being used in this capacity. Um, but what will drive the price will be for example, South Korea using the asset and then going, actually, we're using this so much, let's hold on to some. Let's tokenize all of our gold on the XRP ledger. Let's hold some value in this ledger. Then the price goes up because all of a sudden you've taken loads of tokens out of circulation to sit there. And now you've got less tokens to do the transactions. So then the price goes considerably up. So try to bear that in mind. Um, so Rodney uh, Stokes, do you use Uphold for your 30 to 36 buy orders? So I use a variety of different uh, locations for it, cause just because I've got funds in lots of different places. So I use BitGet, Bybit, and Uphold for those, for those orders. Uphold mostly is just my XDC orders. The other ones are my XRP orders. Um, also, it's worth noting, I already reached my goal for XRP, right? But I'm still trying to buy more. I can't help it, guys. I can't help buying more. Um, why would XRP stay at a low price for much longer? It will begin to become out of reach for the average retail in mass quantities before the pump. Um, it will stay low, for, I believe, for just as long as they need it to stay low. Um, I don't know at what point it starts to become unpurchasable in terms of price because you know people were buying pieces of like 0 0.0001 bitcoin when it was at sixty thousand dollars you know so people will still be buying it they'll just be buying drops um so i get what you're saying like one x it, you, people aren't buying one bitcoin because it's too much but you can buy satoshis you know so uh, i don't necessarily look at it like that Um, Ikenu, uh, hello, Mr. Jackson. Very formal. Thank you. Uh, any thoughts on when Ripple may get a court outcome? I have zero idea. Zero idea. Obviously, there are you have you can build reasons for any date. You can build reasons for it coming tomorrow, right? Because decisions like this are usually made on Fridays, <laughs> right? Um, and then. The markets usually react to things like this, usually outside the crypto space on Mondays. So like, I don't know. Uh, but then also you see on the chart basis, you can see that clearly we need more time to be down in these areas. So it leans itself to more June, July to when the price might go up. And then there's confluence with, with people saying the court case could go to the middle of the year. You know, everyone at Ripple is saying the first half of the year, right? So you can make the case for any date. We just have to sit here and accumulate while we're lucky enough for the prices to be down here. That's that's kind of my my opinion. Joe Schmo's in here. Nostro Vostro. Let's go. Love Nostro Vostro. Um, have you heard about Casper's link with Ripple? Um, outside of kind of the ISO sphere, I haven't heard of a direct link, but please, Barracuda, uh, tell us all. Um, also, what would be really interesting for everyone, I believe, Last night, we had a live members only Q&A uh, with Molly Elmore. She came in to the Discord uh, with our members in a, in a private, very uh, intimate setting. There were about 30 people in there live. And I was bringing people up to ask Molly questions with their voice, like one-on-one, -on -one, get a direct answer from Molly Elmore herself. I'm going to be doing this every week, uh, every two weeks, with a new special guest every single time. 
So uh, if there's never been a better incentive than right now to become a member, you can join as a member on YouTube here by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. Um, you, alternatively, you can go into Discord using the link in the description and then click join now and, and, and actually join as a member. And you'll get access to the next one, which will be in two weeks. And it was it was really, really good. Um, it, was re it was really good. WEF is in here. WEF, do you use a Ledger or cold storage wallet? I do indeed. I believe in those heavily. So I have a, a Ledger Nano X linked in the description. And I have a Decent uh, biometric wallet, which uses my fingerprint. Both have different benefits. Um, but yeah, they're an absolute must for, for all of this. Um, Mark and Tom, uh, looking forward to you and Vale doing a chat together. Maybe I get XRP Vale in the uh, members' insights uh, for next week. Maybe that happens. That would be good. Um, Michael Fatboy Slim, um, what price do you think is possible if and when XRP win the case? So until we have true utility, I don't believe we're going to see true utility until uh, probably 18 months, uh, 18 to 24 months, because I think true utility comes out when you start running CBDCs on the ledgers. Um, until that point, I believe we're in a speculation environment. And the speculation environment is kind of somewhat measurable. And you do that by charting using TA. OK, so I was using the Fibonacci extension tool. Um, I think the there are plenty Fibonacci levels all the way up to thirteen dollars that, that kind of makes sense. So anywhere between where we are today and thirteen dollars, that's where it will rest. And I know that's a massive space, but you don't know the level or the degree to which this is going to be talked about in the news afterwards. Like when the court case comes out, does it kind of get muffled and then we kind of get silenced in our excitement? Or does the news talk about it extensively and then all the people start to FOMO in? All the public who've never heard of it and they just want to buy it, right? Do we see that type of environment? Because if we do see that type of environment, we have to also understand that the prices will come back down. Because if we're in speculation, prices go up, prices come down. When we're in utility, prices go up and they stay up, um, which has never happened before. This would be a first time in history where that has happened, right? Um, because this is a wealth transfer. This is a change in a system. Yes. So stop, look, now listen. It has made a very good point here. If XRP provided liquidity to Deutsche Bank for all derivatives they hold, Consequently, will make the price soar, even if the court case is not settled. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Deutsche Bank have the most, hold the most in derivatives out of any bank in the world. And I think the outcome or something was, I can't remember the exact number, do not hold me to this. Um, but if XRP provided liquidity to Deutsche Bank for derivatives, the price would immediately go to $50. Um, and it might even not be 50, it might be 500. I can't remember what I heard, but it's that kind of like drastic jump. And that wouldn't, that wouldn't depend on the court case, right? So yes, there are outlying things that could, that could do that, but we have to look at the movement of the price and it's how it reacts afterwards. And this is why if you're wanting to take profits, you should be taking profits at those moments, right? Because you can benefit greatly from a, a $50 XRP. Oh my goodness, that would that would be ridiculous for me. And, and many of you, right? So taking profits at that moment would not be frowned upon by any, right? But you have to look how it moves afterwards, right? If it's doing this type of thing, we're probably in speculation. If it goes like this, up to like $50, and then just goes sideways, um, then it's probably, you know, something like Deutsche Bank that have just tokenized all of their derivatives. So. Oh, uh, NM369, 
all documents of bank and international settlements, etc., said that XRP and XLM should be stable coins. So the price should be stable. Well, if their understanding of XRP and XLM was sufficient enough at the time, or they'd been told that by the people at Ripple that this is going to be a stable price when it works, then they were speaking out of knowledge that, that they had been given, right? The alternative is that they were speaking maybe out of kind of trying to project what could happen to XRP without having been given that information from Ripple. And I think that's quite different. If they were given that information from Ripple, I think that's extremely exciting because then they started to put it in documentation, kind of like a slip up. Maybe they weren't supposed to say that, all that kind of stuff. But if they're kind of just guessing, then they are actually in the same boat as we are. Because we understand, knowing the technology, that XRP has to be stable to work properly. And if they're doing the same calculations as us, without in from Ripple, then they're just the same as us. The alternative is extreme, a lot better because they've been told that the price should be stable. And that's the conclusion we came to. So we're on the right page. Um, so for it to work properly, it needs to be stable, yeah. Scott Barnard, will I ever do a public meetup? Uh, uh, debatable. Um, I quite like being safe. <laughs> uh, and I know that you're all uh, lovely in here, but uh, you know, there's always a crazy, like Doge. <laughs> I got you there, Doge, I got you there. Um, I did go to New Jersey, but I didn't ditch you. What percentage portion of, so Karina de Rus, uh, what percentage portion of your bag will you sell to take profits and what will you hold for long-term implementation run? So I currently hold one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one between XRP, XLM, and XDC. Okay, so that accounts for a certain uh, percentage. Of my XLM and my XDC, I will likely get rid of 75% of my XLM and XDC in the process of profit taking. So you can actually, if you do the math, you can actually figure out what that is in terms of a percentage. That's how I'm, that's how I'm working in it. Uh, Ron Soriano. Hi, Lewis. Want to ask more info about the XRP on-demand liquidity pattern, why is why it's unique or why can't it be replicated by another coin? So my understanding of this is that anybody can essentially make that system, right? Anybody can do that. The problem is, is that the industry it's tackling is the financial sector. The financial sector moves incredibly slowly. You try and do something, it takes years for that thing to actually happen. The thing is, Ripple and their XRP ledger has been testing, been testing in countries, which they all have to do testing, regardless of whether it's a paste. You still have to test whether the paste, pasted version works. So you have to, if you're a new coin coming into the space right now and you just copy XRP, you come into the market, you, you say to everyone, all the banks, hey, I understand it's the same thing, but we've tested with Ripple, we've worked with Ripple, we know Ripple, we're gonna stick with them. And I think this is actually the value that Ripple has right now. They've been in the game doing their thing. Any newcomers have to go through this, what is that? Seven years of testing to get to where Ripple is today. They're so far behind. So, um, and also if uh, the on-demand liquidity patent, you can't really copy that as well, if it's a patent. I didn't, I, I, I'm not familiar with the actual patent. So maybe there is a patent, in which case people just can't copy that, <laughs> right? And then there's a clear reason why Ripple can't uh, be copied. Deshaun Thompson, what are you doing, man? $20, thank you so much. Um, please leave a comment if you've got one. Am I paranoid, Barracuda?
<laughs> I've been to New Jersey multiple times and it's been it's been absolutely fine. I, I guess I just haven't gone to the wrong places. Um, so NM369, um, it would be great if you could answer, what do you think about stacking on PolySign? Uh, so only so much I can talk about that. Um, however, if you are a serious investor and you're part of this community and you're familiar with me, please join Discord and ask about PolySign in the Discord, please. Um, uh, there's some very interesting things going on, but this is an insane short time frame and it's serious people uh, only. OK, um, but link to have opened their rounds for PolySign, which is very, very exciting. Um, Rodney Stokes heard about people's XRP being bought back from them. Um, only only conceptually and not haven't heard about anything uh, real. Um, when you take profits, will it be into fiat or something else? Fiat is trash now. <laughs> um, so when I take profits uh, at the end of this kind of bull run, the next bull run, my assets will be converted immediately into other assets, not fiat. So, for example, if XDC goes absolutely crazy, I, I would sell my XDC and buy a house, you know? That's how I would convert it. I would convert it sideways. If you think this is uh, all the assets, crypto, precious metals, property, artwork, kind of anything is in here. And fiat is like the ultimate place where the government have most oversight in terms of like taxing. I would essentially convert my digital assets from my digital asset company, my limited company that holds my digital assets. And I would move that into my property limited company that invest in property and the transfer of assets across sideways, I believe is something like tax-free. You can move it between companies, but it, will not, it won't come out into my personal account whatsoever. Everything that is I hold right now will be held in my companies, not, not as me as a person. So in fact, I won't be owning anything, to be honest. Ron Sorin, Soriano. Thank you very much for, for that. Uh, is that Australian dollars? Cool. Thank you. Okay, so this one is for Sheila. Sheila, I think, represents the majority of everyone's wives uh, in here. <laughs> if, you have, if you have wives. Um, I know there's a 10% of women in here. Um, XRP is really important because it is the answer to the problem that we're seeing now. And I'm sure all the wives will have seen on the news, including Sheila, that the banks right now are running out of money. There's problems with the banks. They have taken on too much risk in their own investments because, of course, we know when you put your money in the bank, the bank take that money and they invest it for themselves. That's how they make so much money because they're very smart and they invest very well with your money, though. <laughs> it's not, not actually your money when you put it in the bank anymore. Um, but the problem is they don't have liquidity. They don't have the money anymore. And now you find these banks going down and larger banks acquiring them because they do have the money. Now, the only solution to having no money is money. But you can't print money because printing money is what they've been doing. And that causes a further downward spiral because it increases the inflation and makes life harder to live for the majority of the people. OK, so you need another type of money. And another word that we can use for cash and money is something called liquidity. And XRP has this functionality where it basically allows for a pool of XRP in the middle of all the banks in all the countries where they can convert their currency into XRP and convert it into the recipient's currency. And you just put the XRP back. So what you end up having is people dipping in and out of this pool to use it for transactions, but the pool never gets less or it never gets more either. There will always just be the pool there to dip in and out of. So banks no longer need to hold this massive reserve of money um, to pay uh, other countries, because that's a whole other thing, but essentially solves the, the banking crisis. And if you believe that we're going digital and you believe that blockchain is the future, the natural conclusion is, 
is that you need XRP uh, to be that bridge asset between all the other assets and also the solution to the current problem. So it's very relevant right now and is the future. So this is the position we're in. I think that's probably the best I've ever explained XRP. So hopefully that was uh, valuable to you. Uh, Kenneth Crane, could XRP be linked to gold? And if so, doesn't gold fluctuate? It fluctuates because they're allowing it to fluctuate. Currently, the gold price is not at a set price, and it has been a set price in the past. The government have set the price for gold before. So there's a precedent for it happening. Um, but yeah, you're right. But that's why you wouldn't necessarily get the asset backed by a single commodity. It would be a basket of commodities. Right. So you'd have you'd have uh, the top CBDC backed up by the SDR CBDCs, which are all backed by loads of commodities. Right. And XRP would basically be backed by all of it because it is transferring the funds between all of those systems. So NeoCharm, thank you for being here. It's nice to see you again. Uh, I'm more interested on the depositing XRP as collateral. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed, um, especially if you consider XRP as being an asset that increases in value over time as increased adoption is seen, because then paying back the, the loan becomes significantly easier. It's almost paid back by the increase in the value of the token. So Jacob's World, surely you need the money to send the money. So that's why uh, banks will actually hold reserves of XRP so that they can pay for the fees associated, right? So every, all the banks will hold XRP, but then also be dipping in and out of the on-demand liquidity. It's a perfect system. It's really good. Any info available how to own XRP as a limited company? Yes. Um, so... How this works is you essentially transfer ownership via a legal document. Um, you, you transfer ownership of your assets into a company that you've set up. Let's say you've got, what's your, what's your name here? Um, XXX Limited. Um, so you would have your XXX Gold uh, Asset Management Company, and you'd have your XXX X Asset Company. That's a good name. Um, and you essentially would contractually say in an agreement, in a purchase agreement, you'd have to get a, a lawyer to write this all up, essentially say that I am selling my all of my assets to this company for the price of, and it could it probably even just be a dollar or a pound or something, just as long as it's in the agreement. It doesn't matter about the market value. You could just, the company could just buy it for a pound and then transfer all the assets. And the assets would be, essentially still in your house you know they wouldn't be in like anywhere special because it's in a company but contractually the real owner of that ledger wherever your crypto is is the company so it's actually very simple it's very, actually very very simple but um i think we can complicate some things um what are the costs for solicitors involved in this um i i don't i don't know yet um, i'm actually in the process of moving assets to, to companies. So I'll let you know. <laughs> um, Ananya, uh, making a video on this is a possibility for sure. Definitely a possibility. Um, there's been a lot of kind of thinking about um, the direction of the channel, what content kind of goes up. Uh, tutorial type videos will not feature on the channel. Uh, certainly something I will do when I build my asset library, my, my library of video content that will go on the new website. So essentially you'll be able to like register and get access to all these like tutorials. But on the uh... <laughs> overthinker, he got his wife to buy more. That wasn't me. That was you. I, I can't take the responsibility for that. <laughs> Um, oh, um, but Joe Hollywood, 
If the US Federal Reserve ends IBM Fed now, could they use Ripple XRP instead to replace it? Look, yeah. I mean, yeah. The companies and banks, countries, are only going to use the best technology for what they specifically need. So if they specifically need more, so what IBM and FedNow offer, then that's what they'll go for. But if they actually kind of slightly need more what Ripple are doing, then they'll go for Ripple, you know? I think we have to understand that different places and different countries are going to go for different solutions. It just makes sense, based on that very niched down topic, that XRP and Ripple would be chosen for cross-border payments um, bank to bank. So if there's any variation on that, then they might use a different solution, but they're choosing the best solutions for what they need. I, I can't really comment on what's enough XRP for people. It's just very difficult to actually uh, know. Um, I don't know much about it, about Cypherium, but if you want to know more about Cypherium, go over to Lyft Capital. Um, he, he knows a lot about it. Also, T's Crypto Spot. There's there's other places to get Cypherium content than out of this, uh, this hole in my face. Yeah, I would make content with Vale. Um, I would actually like him to come into my members' insights uh, thing next uh, in a couple of weeks for the members. That'd be really cool. So to, to summarize, crypto right now, we have to treat it for what it is. We're in tokens right now. We're in developing technologies. But in the future, things are going to change. It's not going to look the same. We're going to remember the days where we used to buy and sell tokens. Uh, I think that's going to be a really funny time um, because when we when we look back, we'll think, oh, man, everything's so easy now. We had to learn like how to how to work the ledger and how to how to send uh, funds from one wallet to another and <laughs> all this stuff. We, we've had to learn that now, um, just like people had to learn to write a website, to, to create a website in the future. It's not it's just not going to be like that. Uh, and I think it's nice to be early. I think you know you're early when you have to go to this length to understand what's going on. Um, super interesting. Um, so I'm going to wait for 250 likes on this video, please. Um, we've been over in here at around 700 viewers on here, which is fantastic. There's a lot of big crypto shows that don't get that uh, viewership. So thank you very much for all of your help. Um, I've got a CBDC documentary coming out on Sunday. It's the most effort I've ever put into a video. Um, and that goes for the whole team behind the scenes working on this video. It's, uh, it's been a mega thing. We've interviewed people from R3. We've interviewed some on the more conspiratorial side. It's been really fun. The, um, thumbnails and titling of these things is is super difficult but super fun um and actually i want to pitch something to you guys right here because i want you to also tag these people i want to put together an absolutely ridiculous mastermind group of people for a podcast like there has never been a bigger and a better xrp podcast ever. I'm talking T's Crypto Spot. I'm talking Kurt. I'm talking Coin Club Quincy. I'm talking XRP Vale. Uh, Lyft Capital. All of us, Black Swan Capitalists, Molly Elmore, Jimmy Valley, ISO Goat, One King, all of us on one table talking about XRP. How crazy would that be? How crazy would that podcast be? That would be wild. 
And I look, I would invite, I, I would invite, <laughs> I would invite anybody who's treated me right online. I will not entertain people being on that podcast, providing them with this platform of the biggest XRP video that there is. Uh, and giving the, the 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 limelight to people, and often Mick off Orphanim, absolutely, giving the limelight to people who have just dug into me online. I'm not I'm not doing that. Um. So I want to make that happen. I think that would be a ridiculous episode. Um, and so anyway, that's what we're gonna do. Uh. It won't be members only. But it'll be pre-recorded. It won't be a live. It won't be a live. But it'll be pre-recorded. Um, Alex Cobb, yeah, get him in. Uh, blockchain backer, get him in. I don't think he cares that much, but. Um, oh, and I want to tell you. I want to tell you. I want to tell you. So the launch of the No Emotion Clothing. Okay, this is so round two of No Emotion Clothing. We're going so much bigger than just this. Okay, it's crazy. So I want to tell you a few things that we've got that might make you chuckle. Okay. You ready? So one of the things I'm, I, they're basically, it's going to be a t-shirt line and one short, like one pair of shorts. Okay. I don't know how I can make the shorts unisex, but well, we cross that road later. It's too funny not to do it. Okay. So one of them is basically a play on words of Brad Garlinghouse, okay? But what it is, it's a nice like rock and roll style t-shirt design. And it's basically called the Brad Garlic House because we can't use his name. So we're calling it a garlic house, like garlic, okay? And on it is a house made of garlic. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it's cool, it's cool. The other one that I think everyone's gonna laugh at here is going to be a pair of shorts, okay? And this pair of shorts, I'm going to show you. This pair of shorts will it'll be up to here, and right here, it's going to have the word David. Can anyone guess why I'm putting David on shorts? And it's, a, it, I mean, it's, now I think about it, it's pretty cringe, but I think it's so funny. <laughs> David Schwartz shorts. It's going to be great. Um, it's going to be so funny. Any, anyway, but they're going to be the most basic shorts, but David Schwartz shorts. The idea came from Vandel uh, Algera from the Black Swan Capitalist Brothers. We were talking on a, on a, on a, online. And he said, you know what would be a good idea? David Schwartz shorts. <laughs> it was great. Um, so anyway, then we've got some other designs. I might as well tell you them here because, you know, we've got everyone here. The other designs are, uh, so one of them is called the bridge assets. Uh, the bridge asset. And it's basically going to say the word bridge with a nice, with an actual bridge illustrated in the shape of an X. I think that looks really, really cool. Um, the other one is which is actually my favorite one called the deep diver. And this is for the people who actually do their deep dives, okay? So it's a deep diver and it's a whole front art of an old school deep diver with the big helmet surrounded by uh, bubbles and fish. And the fish have little X's on as like a little, um, um, you know, a little Easter egg. And then we've got the Phoenix Rising t-shirt. The Phoenix Rising t-shirt is crazy. It's AI generated art in this Phoenix that kind of is rising out of the ashes. It looks like rock and roll uh, merchandise, like concert merchandise. So cool. And we've got no emotion behind the flames and the wings. It's so cool. Um, And so the final one is this like collegiate font style where it just says no emotion uh, right across the front. It looks so cool. I'm so proud of this. Uh, the website's going to be great. Um, there's going to be uh, discounts for members. 
Um, Doge, that's not happening. Um, discounts for members, you know, uh, initially to get early access to make to make orders early because I think there's going to be a limited supply. But those David Schwartz shorts are going to be so great. Um, so if you want to register to know about them when they come out, you can go to noemotion.com. So I'm going to write that here. So you can go to noemotion.com. I might actually need to put the that on there. Yeah, you, so you can click that and you can just put your email in there and I'll email everyone beforehand. Um, but they're, they're going to be hilarious. Okay. It's going to be, it's going to be so funny. Um, oh yes. And, and zip up hoodies, zip up hoodies, but they will be in this style. So the zip up hoodies will be the embroidered ones like this. Oh my goodness. Tea smoke. That's such a good idea. A t-shirt with the number five eating number nine. Five eight nine. Oh, I've missed. I have missed out. Do you know what? T smoke. I'm gonna do my best to get my uh, the artist to 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 do that one. Um, get in contact with me um, on Discord. Getting oh, that's so good. That's better than anything I thought of. Get in contact with me on Discord, please, and we'll sort out some sort of like um, royalty system there. Crazy idea. That's so good. Everyone, round of applause. No, but it, it, I know what you're saying, mental Lake, but it, it kind of like is a thing that is recognizable. But if you only if you know, you know, you know, so good. <laughs> Doge, I do not believe you. <laughs> oh, that's so good. So good. I'm going to get the artist to do that. And hopefully that because the, the designs actually need to be. Um, the designs need to be uh, finalized by this Friday. So we're, we're actually it's tomorrow. Um, why would you sell hoodies and not T-shirts and shorts? Because when I sold the hoodies, it was cold. Now I'm selling T-shirts and shorts because it's going to get warm. 100 IQ. Everyone ev now everyone's coming in with ideas for the shirts to get the royalties. <laughs> um, anyway, we're coming up on an hour here. This was a tremendous little live stream. I'm going to do them once every week. So be prepared, come in, get these questions down. Um, and, and we'll do this every week. It'll be it'll be great fun. One of them, one of the live streams in the week will actually be members only. So members will be the only people to see the stream. This was the public live stream. So remember that. In two weeks, we'll have another public uh, stream like this. Next week, we'll have a members only stream. Again, you can join as a member in loads of different ways. Click join next to the subscribe button on YouTube, or you can go to the Discord below and you can see join as a member on Discord in the description below and you also get access that way. Um, no, no, to the live stream, you have to be on YouTube. Sorry. So if you want the live streams, then join on YouTube. Um, but I think that's all. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna leave everyone here. I uh, appreciate all your time. Thanks for all your support. Look forward to April the twenty third for the drop of the clothing. Twenty first or twenty third. Um, I may do some live streams on TikTok as well. Men select. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm getting back into TikTok though. All right. Stay emotionless, everyone. I'll see you in the next one.